you have purchased one of the finest engineered, designed, and manufactured above-ground swimming pools in the market today. Your swim and play pool is designed to give you many years of enjoyment and relaxation in the comfort of your own backyard. The installation of this pool is not difficult. Follow the simple assembly steps as we show them to you. Line up your pool cartons. Notice that one of the cartons is marked with an Open This Carton First label. This carton contains the assembly instructions, packing list, warranty card, and the self-adhesive Do Not Dive warning labels. Let's take a look at the assembly instructions. Each step is clearly shown and written in an easy-to-read manner for an easy installation. The packing list is a breakdown of all the parts for the pool contained in each carton. Parts are illustrated and identified by part number, description, and quantity for your pool. Let's get started. First, select the proper pool location. Choose a location in your yard that best fits with your landscaping ideas. Keeping in mind that the area should be level, firm, and away from trees and overhead wires. It should be convenient to an electrical outlet and water supply. Keep the pool away from existing structures such as your house, garage, or any other condition that might encourage diving. Remember, your pool is approximately four feet deep and is not designed for diving or jumping. Check your local building codes when selecting your pool site. Do not install your pool over any septic tanks or any underground utilities. Here are some of the tools and materials that you will need. Once you have read the instructions and selected the pool location, it is time to get a friend to help. The installation of an average size pool normally requires two to three people. Step one, preparing the ground. Drive a stake into the ground in the center of the pool location. Measure out from the stake one half the pool radius plus six inches. Mark the outside of the area using chalk, flour, or spray paint. Using a shovel, remove all grass within the pool area. Nail the end of a 2x4 onto the center stake. The 2x4 should be long enough to extend from the center stake to the outside of the clearance radius. And with the use of a level on top of the 2x4, work the 2x4 around the pool area in a circular manner leveling the area as you go. Do not fill in low areas. Dig away high areas for a solid, firm foundation. Pay special attention to the outer area as this is where the pool frame will rest. Rake the entire area removing any sticks, stones, or debris. Step 2. Bottom Rail and Plate Assembly Form the bottom rail assembly by sliding the bottom rail groove facing up into the bottom plate, 1 16th of an inch away from the rail stop in the plate. Continue in this manner all the way around the pool. Measure from the center stake to each plate and make sure all measurements are equal. Stake the outside of the ring to prevent it from moving while assembling the pool. Install patio blocks under each plate. Mark the location of each plate and install a patio block by digging down so that the top of the plate block is at ground level. Check the levelness by using the 2x4 from the center stake to each patio block and from block to block. Bring the required amount of pre-washed sand or sifted earth inside the pool area at this time. Do not damage the bottom rail assembly. Step 3. Insert wall into the bottom rail. Do not attempt to install the wall on a windy day. Unbox the wall on a 4x4 piece of plywood. Determine the location of your filter, as the filter inlet and outlet holes are at the beginning of the wall. Note the This End Up label on the wall. At the top is where the filter inlet and outlet holes are scored. Start inserting the wall into the bottom rail in the center of a bottom plate. Continue inserting the wall into the bottom rails all the way around the pool 
until the wall ends meet. If the wall ends don't meet, don't panic. Simply readjust the rails, spacing evenly in each of the bottom plates and align the wall ends. A screwdriver can be used to help align the wall ends. Step 4. Closing the wall. There are two types of wall closure systems, four bar wall closure system and the recessed posi lock system. If your pool wall has the four closure bar system, follow these steps. Secure the wall ends together simply by inserting the truss head screws from inside the pool through the holes in both ends of the wall and securing with the serrated flange nut on the outside of the pool. Make sure that all the holes have a screw and nut. Tighten each bolt to 85 inch pounds. If no torque wrench is available, tighten each nut until snug, then tighten an additional half turn. Over tightening the nuts could fracture the bolt and could also result in pool failure. If your pool wall has the recessed posi lock system, follow these steps. Align the recess of the washers with the recess of the wall. One washer is used inside the pool and one on the outside. Secure the wall ends together simply by inserting the truss head screws from inside of the pool through the inside washers, the holes in both ends of the wall, and the outside washers. Secure with the flange nut on the outside of the pool. Make sure that all the holes have a screw, washers, and nut and are tightly secure. Tighten each bolt to 85 inch pounds. If no torque wrench is available, tighten each nut until snug, then tighten an additional half turn. Over tightening the nuts could fracture the bolt and could also result in pool failure. Step 5. Protect your liner. Once the wall is closed and the screws and nuts are tightened securely, cover the screw heads on the inside of the pool with duct tape from the top of the wall to the bottom. If the cutouts for the through the wall filter, inlet and outlet are not going to be used, tape over the pre-scored area on the inside of the pool. Step 6. Recheck your work. Make sure your pool is round by measuring from the center stake to the inside of the pool wall in all directions and make sure these measurements are equal. Remove the center stake from the pool area after the measurements and adjustments are made. Step 7. Earth Mound. Build the earth mound around the inside base of the pool wall using either the pre-washed sand or sifted earth. Shape the earth mound to reach 8 inches up the wall and 8 inches towards the center of the pool. Evenly spread the remaining sand or earth around the pool floor to eliminate any peaks or valleys in the base. Dampen the sand and the pool base with a hose to prevent it from moving while installing the liner. Step 8. Through Wall Skimmer. If the through the wall skimmer inlet and outlet holes are to be used, simply break the perforations by using a knife and a hammer. If you have the standard through the wall skimmer, cut only the inside square area of the perforations. If you have the wide mouth through the wall skimmer, cut the entire area. Step 9. Liner Installation. There are several types of liners available, two of which are the standard overhang liner and the easy hook or J-hook liner. Make sure which type of liner came with your pool and follow the appropriate instructions. Select a site near the pool with enough room to lay out and open up the liner. Inspect the area and remove any sharp objects that may cut or damage the liner. Unbox and unfold the liner to its full open position. Locate the center of the liner and refold the two halves to meet at the center. Fold up the liner along the center to allow you to carry it into the pool, keeping the two ends along the center exposed. Place liner into the pool keeping hold of the two ends. Pull the ends of the liner to the opposite ends of the pool in the center. If you have a standard overhang liner, overlap the liner over the wall and temporarily secure it using the plastic edging. 
If you have an easy hook or J hook liner, place the hook part of the liner onto the top of the wall around the entire pool. Temporarily place a few of the top rails over the liner and wall for support. Use a soft broom to stretch out the bottom and to make sure that the liner seam is resting totally on the earth mound and not suspended in the air. Continue in this manner all around the pool until the liner has fully opened up and that you are sure the liner is resting on the bottom and not suspended in the air. Wrinkling of the liner may be evident. This in no manner reduces its structural strength. The more you work with the broom on the bottom, the more wrinkles will come out. You can now start filling your pool with water. As the pool is filling, you may keep working on the liner to remove as many wrinkles as possible. Do not forcefully pull the liner once the water has started to be let in, as this may damage the liner. Excess liner material on the outside of the pool may be double folded at this time by folding the excess material between the wall and the liner, or it can be rolled up once the pool is finished. Step 10. Pre-assembly of the top plates. Before the top plates can be installed, it might be necessary to install the cage nuts in the appropriate location. Please check your packing list to see if your pool requires the cage nuts. Using pliers, Simply squeeze together the spring sides of the cage nut and insert the nut into the slot of the top plate from underneath. Step 11. Installing the verticals, top plates, and top rails. If your pool has the two-piece resin vertical, insert the flat piece into the vertical before installation. Install the verticals to the bottom plates using the sheet metal screws. Make sure the four holes in the face of the vertical are on top. Insert a top rail into the top plate up to the stop. Align the top plate over a vertical and press the top rail down over the plastic edging. Continue in this manner all the way around the pool. Secure the top plates to the verticals using the sheet metal screws. Step 12. Install top ledges. Take note of the three warning ledges. The one ledge with the large warning on the top is to be installed by the entry point of the pool. The other two ledges with the warning on the inside lip of the ledge are to be installed opposite of the entry point, with the warning facing the entry point. This is to provide the maximum amount of warning where people enter the pool. Do not obstruct or remove these warnings. Place the ledges over the wall with the two ends resting on a top plate. Refer to your instructions to find out which holes in the top plate you should start with. It may be necessary to use a different set of holes than those shown in the instructions. If your pool has the extruded resin ledges, you must use the stainless steel washers with each sheet metal screw to secure the top ledges into the top plates. Align the holes in the top plate with the holes in the ledge and insert a screw through the top ledge into the plate. Leave all the screws loose until all the ledges have been installed and the pool filled with water. This allows for any adjustments you might have to make while installing the remaining ledges and also allows the pool to form its true shape. You should not install the skimmer until the water level is one inch below the return cutout. Assemble all the parts of your skimmer following the manufacturer instructions. If you are using the skimmer with two standard gaskets, follow the next steps. Starting from the outside of the pool, position the skimmer and one gasket onto the skimmer cutout. From inside the pool, align the gasket and skimmer faceplate with the skimmer and secure with the screws supplied. Using a knife, cut the vinyl liner inside the skimmer mouth. From outside of the pool, carefully cut a round hole in the liner for the through the wall return fitting. Using gaskets provided, one gasket inside the pool and one gasket outside the pool. Insert return fitting in opening and tighten securely with a wrench to prevent leakage. If you are using the wall saver skimmer gasket, using a knife, cut the vinyl liner in the necessary position around the skimmer wall punch. Spread open the wall saver skimmer gasket and install over the wall and liner. 
Starting from the outside of the pool, position the skimmer onto the skimmer cutout. From inside the pool, align the skimmer faceplate with the skimmer and secure with the screws supplied. For the installation of the return fitting, follow the steps shown before. For best skimmer action, water surface should be three inches above bottom opening of the skimmer. Once the pool has been filled with water, tighten all the lead screws securely. Step 13. Install the top covers. To install the deluxe full contoured covers, simply place the inside and outside cover over the ledge joint. Align the hole in the covers with the cage nut in the top plate. Secure the cover using the stainless steel hardware on the top and lock the frame together by attaching the cover to the vertical using the sheet metal screws. To install the 6 or 7 inch deluxe top covers, insert the bottom section into the top so that it becomes one unit. Then snap cover into place, aligning tab on bottom of the cover with slot in the top plate of the pool, and secure using the sheet metal screws. To install the two-piece wraparound cover, slide the inside cover into position and align the hole in the inside cover with the cage nut attached to the top plate. Secure the inside cover using the stainless steel hardware. Slide the outside cover onto the inside cover, making sure the inside cover is in the slot of the outside cover. Align the holes on the side of the bottom wrap with the holes on the top of the vertical and secure using the sheet metal screws. Place the bottom pedestal onto the bottom of the vertical and align the holes on the side with the holes on the bottom of the vertical. Secure using the sheet metal screws. Step 14. Warning Labels Four additional warning labels have been supplied with your pool. Apply the self-adhesive labels to the pool or pool area where they are visible to all persons using the pool. Congratulations! You have just completed installing your pool. Take some time out now to fill out your warranty registration card and mail it to us. A list of emergency phone numbers should be kept on hand at the closest phone to the pool location. You should have numbers for the nearest police, fire and rescue departments, the nearest physician, the nearest ambulance service, and the nearest hospital. Keep life-saving equipment on hand at the pool location at all times. Standard equipment should be a light but strong pole, not less than 12 feet long, with blunt ends and a one quarter inch diameter throwing rope as long as one and a half times the maximum width of the pool, attached to a ring buoy with an outside diameter of 15 inches. Common sense and safety precautions can prevent accidents and serious injury. You, as the pool owner, are responsible for the safety of all pool users. Some safety tips, rules, and regulations are, do not dive or jump into the pool. Always supervise children. Never swim alone. Never leave your pool open and unattended. Remove ladder and use a safety fence or a safety cover to secure your pool. Do not walk or run on the top ledge of your pool. Do not dispense chemicals into the pool while the pool is being used. Do not permit horseplay. Do not install a diving board or a slide. Do not allow use of alcohol or drugs in the pool area or permit anyone under the influence of alcohol or drugs in the pool area. You and your family can now enjoy those fun-filled swimming days in your own backyard. <laughs>